Greed is ruining Halo Infinite. Now don't get me wrong, I've been playing the absolute f out of Halo Infinite's multiplayer. It's partially one of the reasons why I haven't uploaded a new video in a while, because I've been playing so much Halo, which is great. It's a really fun game. It's the most fun I've had in Halo since Reach, and that's amazing to say. I'm so happy that we have a game that's got a great sandbox, it's got great weapon balancing, it's got good movement, it's got pretty good maps. I'm really happy with the way Halo Infinite's turning out in terms of its gameplay, but obviously, if you've heard anything about Halo Infinite over the last couple of weeks, you've probably definitely heard that the progression system and microtransactions are a massive problem in this game. Today we're going to be talking about all of that stuff, and I'm going to be giving my opinions on what's been happening and how I think we can change the way this game is, because right now, 343 and Microsoft are completely squandering the potential of what could be a fantastic Halo game for the sake of more money. I've played a lot of games that have microtransactions and in-game stores and whatnot. I mean, I played a lot of Modern Warfare when that came out. I played the shit out of that game. And there was lots of microtransactions in that store, and you could argue that a lot of the stuff was overpriced. But I'd say Halo Infinite is one of the worst in-game stores that I've ever seen. And not only this, but the progression system is so slow that it's designed to push you into buying cosmetics and buying XP grants and buying challenge swaps just so you can get that little bit more progression. And it's very, very predatory. First of all, I want to talk about the Battle Pass and the customization system. Now, I think we'd all be in agreement when I say that customization and customizing your Spartan is paramount to a Halo game. It's within the DNA of Halo, and it's always been a massive part of the game for me and many others. I remember trying to get Katana in Halo 3 back in the day, trying to get recon, trying to get security, and doing all these different challenges and things to get this armor. It was the main thing that I would always chase after in those old Halo games. But in Halo Infinite, customization is really limited. Now, if you don't buy the Battle Pass customization, you can pretty much throw the idea of customization out of the window entirely. It's absolutely crazy. If you don't pay for the Battle Pass at all, you're basically not going to get any armor or anything. I mean, you can't even customize the colors of your Spartan. In previous Halo games, the color palette had primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. But now, we just have one block colour. And if you don't buy the Battle Pass, or you don't sink any money into the shop, you're gonna have those colours, and that's pretty much it. I just want to highlight a massive issue with 343's free Battle Pass, because they advertised this game as if, if you didn't pay for anything, you were gonna get plenty of customization options. If you don't pay for Season 1's Battle Pass and just opt for the free side of it, and so see all of the free items that you get, you get 66 items in total. Now that may sound great, but this post on r slash Halo by user Nevermore514 highlights just how little you get if you don't buy the Battle Pass. So, if you don't buy the Battle Pass, you get three backdrops, four visors, five armor coatings, two stances, three chests, one AI color, one AI model, two shoulder pads, two helmets, two helmet attachments, one wrist attachment, and 40 challenge swaps. Yeah, you heard that right. 40 challenge swaps. That's ridiculous, isn't it? You could have thought that maybe out of those 40 items, they would have maybe switched out a few of those challenge swaps for maybe more pieces of armor. But you'd be wrong if you thought that. Because obviously the Battle Pass is designed so that if you don't buy it, you don't get anything. So you're gonna buy it. I personally bought the Battle Pass for this exact reason, because for me, customization in Halo is massive, and the only reason why I was able to justify buying it is because the multiplayer component's free. But we're gonna talk a little bit about that later, because nobody actually asked for the multiplayer component to be free whatsoever, they just decided to drop it randomly. So 
So if you don't buy the Battle Pass, customization options are going to be few and far between. But even if you do buy the Battle Pass, the progression is so slow that you feel like you're getting nowhere whatsoever. There's no direct XP from game performance, so if you were to get a killing spree, running Riot, killing Frenzy, multi-kills, special kills, stuff like that, you're not going to get rewarded for those medals, and you're not going to get rewarded for your hard work in the game. Just a flat 50 XP for finishing games. There's a daily challenge called Practice Makes Perfect, and it's basically a never-ending challenge where every time you complete one game, you get 50 XP. This wasn't there at the launch, this wasn't there whatsoever. They added it as a result of feedback for no match XP, and they've actually changed it from a flat 50 XP to an XP reward based on how many games you've played that day. So for example, the first game of the day will give you 300 XP, the next will give you 200, the next will give you 200, and then you'll get 100 until you get down to the initial 50 again. Which has helped, it has helped progression pretty good, but it's still not where I want it to be, and it's still a half measure. You can see that they're doing the very bare minimum to change this, because they still want progression to be painfully slow. It's just crazy to me, in the Master Chief Collection, you have all of these XP bonuses that you get for game performance or whether or not you won or lost, whether or not you dominated the other team, you know, how many medals you got. But in Infinite, they just decided to completely scrap this previous system that worked pretty damn well and opting just to give you 50 XP after every game. Not to mention that it takes a thousand XP to level up just once through the battle pass. So if you were to not complete any challenges at all and just get match XP, it would take you 20 matches to level up once. And I think that's ridiculous. The only way you can actually viably get XP is by completing the weekly challenges. That I also will mention that there's only a limited amount of these weekly challenges. So if you finish all of your weekly challenges early, there's basically no point in playing the game for the rest of the week because you're just going to get 50 XP for completing matches. There's no reward for doing anything special. It doesn't matter if you win or lose, you just get that 50 XP. So once you've completed all of your main challenges, if you're someone who, like me, who wants to get progression and get customization options, there's no point in playing the game after you've finished those challenges, which is really disappointing. I'm going to be calling back to MCC a lot because the Master Chief Collection has been out since 2014 and it's a great framework that 343 should have used for Halo Infinite. It has a ton of challenge options, it has weekly challenges, it has seasonal challenges and I just think they should have looked to the Master Chief Collection and gone, you know what, maybe we should use a lot from this platform that we've been working on for many many years and perfecting it and then using that in Halo Infinite. They just haven't and it's really confusing to me because both Halo Infinite and Master Chief Collection have challenge-based progression systems. Obviously, MCC is a little bit more lenient because it gives you match XP and all that type of stuff, but they both have very challenge-oriented XP systems, and you would expect that they would just look at MCC and think, hmm, that works. That means people have constant progression, they always have a source of XP, and they always have something to be working towards, whether it be weekly or seasonal challenges. But they just haven't adopted this framework, and it's confusing me and a lot of people that are playing this game at the minute. Not to mention that some challenges are linked to specific game modes, and yet there is no playlists in the multiplayer of Halo Infinite. So, say if you have a challenge that says, win three games of Oddball, you have to just go to Quick Play and hope that you get Oddball. You can't just pick Oddball as its own playlist, because, again, they want to slow you down as much as possible and give you hurdles at every single possible point they can to stop your progression so that you're playing the game for longer. This also causes causes a lot of issues when it comes to teamwork. I've noticed that a lot of people just want to play Slayer, so when they get into a game of, say, Capture the Flag or Oddball, they're not going to play the objective whatsoever, they just run out there and try and play Slayer, and that causes a lot of issues and makes the objective-based game modes just not very fun to play because it feels like I'm the only one that's actually trying to go for the objective. And I know a lot of people have said this on Twitter and Reddit and stuff before, but I thought I'd echo it because it is a big problem, and it just makes 
makes the game a whole lot less fun to play. I'm not always in the mood to play capture the flag or to play oddball. Sometimes I just want to play a casual game of Slayer and just have a bit of fun instead of actually playing really seriously and trying to beat the other team. So it's just quite annoying when I feel like I have to back out of games all the time because I'm not a fan of the game mode. This lack of playlists also highlights another issue with Halo Infinite, that a lot of the classic game types that were included upon launch on previous Halo games just aren't there whatsoever. Classic game types like Infection, SWAT, Rumble Pit, King of the Hill, Griffball, all of these great game modes that add a lot of diversity to Halo and that I could argue are a staple of Halo multiplayer to a lot of people, just for some reason aren't in the game and I don't know why. It wouldn't be that hard to add an Infection game variant, but I feel like they're making the same mistake they did with Halo 5 by locking content behind timed events and stuff like that. I just, I'm not a fan of that. Like Fiesta, for example. The Tenrai Fracture event recently just went live, and Fiesta is now a game mode that's only going to be available during the time that that event is live, and it doesn't make sense to me. Just give us Fiesta. Give us a Fiesta playlist. Like, why are you locking it behind a timed event? That It doesn't make any sense. There's so many game modes that I'd love to see in Halo Infinite, but they're just not there, and I don't know if they're going to add them as permanent game modes in the future, or if they're just going to wait for another random event to come along so they can give you, I don't know, team snipers or infection for a small amount of time. I just, I want the Halo game modes. I don't want just quick play, big team battle, and ranked. It's just not extensive enough for what Halo's meant to be. Obviously, I mentioned earlier them locking colours behind the battle pass, which again is just, it's just, it's just ridiculous. I just want to highlight that again. We're playing a Halo game where you can't choose the primary and secondary colours of your Spartan. You have to buy the battle pass and level up to get colours. Is that, is, it's just, it's just absolutely ridiculous. You're also not able to mix and match armours from different armour cores, which is also really annoying and a very pointless system. Like, I can't have armour from the Mark 5B set and mix and match it with the Mark 7 set, which is just it's just so limiting for no reason. Halo's always been about mixing and matching armors and making your Spartan your own. And with the limited progression they have now, it would have been actually good to be able to mix and match armors between the Reach armors and the Halo Infinite Mark 7 armors. But for some reason, they thought armor cores was a good idea. I don't really know. You've also got armor kits as well. In this specific season, we have the armor kits for Kat, Carter, George, Meal, and June from Halo Reach. And they look great. They look really good. But again, you can't mix and match the armors from any of them. If you put the armor kit on, you're stuck with that armor kit. You can't change anything about it, which is just so weird to me. It doesn't make any sense. It's like the developers just never played Halo and didn't think that people would want to mix and match armors from Noble Team. Like, this is Noble Team from Halo Reach. Halo Reach armor was, like, so customizable in that game. But in Infinite, it's just a shadow of its former self, which is just a massive shame. Stuff in the store also costs just a ridiculous amount. I did purchase one of the clan packs. It was the Fnatic one because I liked the look of the black and red Mark V. But to be honest, the main reason I bought it is because I thought I would be able to customize the individual pieces and actually apply the helmet and, you know, maybe change the visor color or change the shoulder pads or whatever. But no, if you buy the Mark V armor coatings from the store, you can't customize them whatsoever. You just whack them on and, and that's that. It's just a skin, basically. So I feel like I wasted my money a little bit because there was no customization after the fact of buying it. It was just buy it and there you go. There's your skin. It's great. It's just so weird to me that no matter whether you buy the battle pass or not, there's still such limited customization, which is so disappointing for a Halo game that's been in development for seven years. Like, I know everyone brings up, oh, it's just a beta, don't worry. The be you know, when it goes into a full game and there's more stuff going on, it's going to be great. It's going to be so much better. But this game has been in development for seven years, and there's this little armor customization. Not to mention the fact that there's armors that we've seen in trailers and gameplay videos that aren't in the game for whatever reason, like CQB. We can see that CQB. CQB is a completely completed armor set, and yet for some reason it's not in the game, and I don't know why. It's like they're just for some reason holding back on content to drip feed it to us instead of just releasing it. It's so strange, I don't know what's going on there.
What's crazy is the new Fractured 10 Riot event as well, where it limits players through how much you can progress in the battle pass. You can actually only progress through seven levels in this first run of the event. It's going to come back in January and in February, so we can actually continue our progress then. But it's just so weird that they gave us this timed event and they gave us this new free battle pass, and yet people can't progress past rank 7 on it because they say so, I guess. I don't really know why. Maybe again, it's because people that aren't paying for the battle pass get this for free, but then because it's free, they get limited, so they can't actually get any cosmetics whatsoever until the next time the event is live, which is just too long to wait for most people, so most people will just cave and buy the battle pass to get some form of customization. It's mental. It's actually mental. Like, I don't know what 343 and Microsoft are doing, but it's a terrible strategy, and it's gonna kill their game. It's just weird, because you guys remember that trailer for Halo Infinite's multiplayer, where they talked a lot about, you know, we're gonna have so much free armor it's not just gonna be a matter of paying for things and then you get the customization there's gonna be a lot of customization for free and stuff like that and they almost made out that the samurai armor in that trailer was gonna be free for everybody but in fact that exact piece of armor is gonna be in the store in the future it's it's just ridiculous it's so misleading because throughout that trailer while they're talking about all this free content they show this armor a lot as if this is going to be one of the free pieces of armor you get. Now, don't get me wrong, the armor core, you do get for free. You don't have to pay for a thing to get the armor core, but it's just a little bit misleading that the actual armor in the trailer that looks a lot cooler was almost depicted to be the free armor. It's just really misleading, and it, it's, again, another little thing that I remember from the trailer that just didn't add up with the actual multiplayer component itself. If you guys don't remember, let me just refresh your memory. I'll play the clip right now because it looks really bad in hindsight. The body of customization content that we have on day one ensures that there will be millions of customization combinations for Spartans on the battlefield. Coatings offer us a unique opportunity to craft some hyper-polished looks and let you express yourselves in ways you've never been able to before. We're coming at this from a player first mentality. All of these rewards are single source, so you're never gonna be confused about where things come from. If you can unlock something in the battle pass, we're not gonna let any other players circumvent that by purchasing it out of the storefront. A lot of our stuff is unlocked through playing the game and only through playing the game. Yikes, that shit is just, they're just lying, aren't they? It's just pure lies to make themselves look better and to get people hyped for the game and now all the truth is coming out. Now, the matter of the multiplayer component being free. Now, this at first seemed like a great thing. I was really excited for the Halo multiplayer to be free. It meant loads more players, loads more people experiencing the sandbox of Halo and the unique gameplay that the sandbox brings. But I feel as if the only reason that they decided to make the multiplayer component free was so they could more easily justify the ridiculous cost of cosmetics and to push microtransactions more. I mean, as I said earlier, the only reason that I was personally able to justify purchasing the battle pass for myself was that the multiplayer component was free. And I feel like this is what they wanted people to think. You go, ah, it's free, you know, I can spend seven, seven ninety nine on a battle pass. But as a result of them making the multiplayer free, it's almost like all of the systems they've put in place in terms of progression, in terms of customization, the way all of that works is geared to make it as slow as possible for you so that you, then you justify more buying challenge swaps, buying XP boosts, buying cosmetics from the store, stuff like that. And it's just, it's the wrong reason to make a game free, isn't it? Let's be honest, like free games, they're great. I've played some brilliant free games in the past, and I think games that go from paid to being free is a great move. But then adding all these predatory things on top of that almost just makes the free part of the game completely pointless.
At every turn in Halo Infinite, you're constantly limited to how much XP you can gain and how much you can customize your Spartan. It's really disappointing in a game like Halo where progression and expression through customization is such a big part of the game's DNA. I just want to look back on the MCC one more time because it baffles me that they had this perfect framework for a multiplayer game and just completely decided to disregard it. And I wanted to highlight that many times throughout this video. They definitely looked towards MCC and chose not to take inspiration from it. Why is the framework of MCC that's worked for years not being used? It's obvious, it's to squeeze more money out of the loyal player base that's awaiting more content. Now I just want to highlight at the end here that it's most likely not the devs at 343 that are making these decisions, but the higher ups at Microsoft that are calling the shots and ruining a perfectly good game. Don't go to 343 into their comments and abuse the developers or threaten them or, or anything like that. It's Microsoft that oversees everything that's happening in Halo Infinite, and they're definitely the ones that have applied these business models to the game that are designed to limit your experience if you don't spend more and more money on the game. And it's just so predatory, and in my opinion, ruining a game that is so good and has so much potential. I've been loving playing Halo Infinite. I think it's great. The weapons are cool, it's responsive, the equipment is fantastic, they actually really balance sprint really well, the guns feel great to use, the armor that we do have actually looks great, the game is beautiful and is the best looking Halo game we've had, but Microsoft is slowly ruining the experience and every week when I get those new challenges, I'm getting less and less excited to come back to the game and I think that's a massive issue. If these issues aren't addressed directly and changed by Microsoft and 343, I think Halo Infinite is going to be dead in the water and if the campaign isn't any good, this game is getting forgotten immediately and thrown in the trash with Halo 4 and 5 straight away. I just don't want a game that has such potential to be so fun to be ruined for the sake of monetization. Anyway, I thought I'd give my two cents on everything that's going on with Halo Infinite. I'm sure a lot of you in the comments section have probably agree with what I'm saying. Let me know if you don't agree and if you think that I'm wrong. Um, because I don't think that I am. <laughs> a lot of people have been complaining about Halo Infinite and I think the community consensus is that it's a great game but the progression is just really bad and needs to be fixed. 343 have actually addressed this and I don't know if that's just a PR stunt and they're trying to make everyone think they're going to fix it but they're actually not. But only time will tell. I'm excited for the future of this game and future content and updates but I just hope they don't pull their punches for the sake of money. I want them to drop as much content as they can and get this feeling like a fully fledged Halo game instead of just being the skeleton that it is right now. Because you know what? If they play their cards right, I think 343 could make Halo Infinite into one of the best Halo experiences to date. I really enjoy the game and I think it has a lot of potential. And with the campaign dropping very soon, I guess the only time's gonna tell if this is gonna be a Halo game that's gonna be remembered fondly for years to come by the majority of the community. I'm very excited to see how this game's gonna turn out and I'm definitely gonna be giving my thoughts in video form on the campaign when that drops and streaming it on Twitch when co-op drops because I'm gonna do co-op legendary on that game and eventually that'll come out, so that'll be good as well. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.